Hello, I'm Lou and welcome back to Open Up The Cloud. So in today's video, I want to talk a little bit about my background and how I got into tech and the cloud industry. I was watching a video from a guy called Rishabh Kumar the other day where he talked about his journey into tech. When I was watching the video, I kind of realized that it would be quite useful for people as well if I can share my background and how I got into the industry. Okay, so where did it all start? I started programming or software engineering, kind of getting into that when I was 18. One of my modules in my first year of university, we were taught how to talk JavaScript and that was one of the things that I did as the first module. Now I took a split degree. The reason I didn't actually choose a full computer science course as well because I really didn't have the, the courage or the, the confidence that really that I would be able to get into software engineering. I know like a lot of other people the idea of sort of coding and programming and things like that was very very scary to me and then my first job was basically a placement between university in my between my second and my final year. I sort of submitted my CV or applied for hundreds of different jobs at that point. Had an interview for a couple but ultimately wasn't really being successful throughout that entire year and towards the end of basically that summer so really sort of last minute uh, not long to go a couple of weeks before I had my final year of university I was super lucky because I had a remote interview with a company who liked me and then offered me a job uh, down in London the money that I got paid was basically it wasn't even enough money to cover my rent at the time so I had to borrow money from my parents to to make up the difference so that I could even live now one thing that I remember really strongly about that period of time is maybe six months into that first job where I had this sort of moment where I realized that I could could kind of do this as a job. I could do software engineering, I could do programming as a job. But now if you think about that, that was actually a full two and a half years though of learning to program. So a lot of time when I'm getting people coming and talking to me about getting into the tech industry and stuff like that, that's one thing that I like to remind people of is even in my case, it took me you know two and a half years before I even had the beginnings of a sense of confidence that I could really make a career out of tech and that I could actually code and program and that was something that I could do. Now, because I had a placement, basically when I finished that placement, I went back to university, I kind of had to go through the whole process again of applying for a first job. Going into that second job, I did some things that were totally different. Specifically at the time, I remember having conversations with some of the people that I worked with about uh, AngularJS. There, at the time, what there was was this idea of this like mean stack. So we had Mongo, Express, Angular, and Node. It was these four technologies that were put together and so many companies at that time were sort of starting to get into the position of hiring people for that. So I spent this entire year between my, uh, my final year of university then then really sort of immersing myself in this one tech stack. I was then applying very specifically for this job as sort of a bean stack developer. And this is something that I see when people come and talk to me or ask me questions as well about getting into the cloud industry. What I really recommend is to go and do that sort of market research into which different roles are sort of hot within your industry or within your area right now. And then to focus on those skills very specifically and hone in on those. So I've put out this video that I will also share, which is basically where I did an analysis of 100 different job descriptions. And uh, the reason that I made that video is really because I wanted to show you basically a way that you can go and analyze different roles and you can start to understand the different skill sets behind them and you can start to come up with that idea and you can create that sort of mean stack development for yourself. Another thing that I did as well uh, when applying for that second job is I actually then started my own portfolio. Now a portfolio ultimately is sort of a website or an online CV that you've got and in particular you're going to showcase a number of different projects on there. So by having a portfolio what you're doing is effectively removing that risk for the company because you're showing actual tangible things that you've done. And inside the portfolio, I had stuff like blogs as well in there, talking about ideas and technologies and things like that that I had built at the time. One of the things that I really struggled with was kind of taking my skills from that kind of like beginner or beginner intermediate level to an advanced level. So what I basically did was sat on this website called Code Wars, which gives you these little code challenges and you complete them. And the thing that's really cool about Code Wars is it actually shows you the answers or the solutions other people have done for those challenges. Another sort of big step change as well, whilst I was in university specifically doing sort of software engineering, one of the ways that we were sort of taught to debug or one of the things that I was doing to debug my code as well was using these like alert boxes. So if you're if you're familiar with JavaScript or if you just go into your browser console now and type in alert, what you'll get is you'll get a pop-up function uh, which interrupts your program and pauses it for a second and then you can you know disrupt the alert and then continue. And this was the style of debugging that I was basically doing uh, throughout university. But then when I got into the professional space, what I noticed is that other people weren't debugging in this way. So people were actually using, let's say, the real debuggers, for instance, within your browser. For me personally, that made such a big difference for my understanding about how programming works and how everything starts to fit together because I started to understand about scoping, about variables, about how everything interacts at periods of time. And I was able to do that by putting little breakpoints into the code and pausing the execution as it goes along. 
Okay, so that really talks about how I got into web development, but doesn't necessarily talk about how I got into the cloud industry. Now, my exposure to cloud actually started very early. So from that first job that I ever worked in, they were working with AWS. I remember going into the AWS console and they were deploying instances on EC2. And I remember having to learn about things like SSH and logging into instances, EC2. I think we were storing some stuff in S3 as well. So I was immediately kind of dropped into the cloud world there and I didn't really know it. They were just using AWS and that was just the way that things were done. But then what I found is then I was started working for some other the teams that were doing sort of software engineering which is also mixed with the cloud and that's where I kind of got my introduction into the cloud world as well the moment for me where things really clicked and the things you know kind of set off my excitement and interest for the cloud industry was really when sort of the serverless and serverless revolution came about because that was the first time where I started to see how the cloud was different than just moving stuff on renting a server uh, in an AWS context you have sort of DynamoDB you have SNS you have SQS uh, you have EventBridge you have step functions and that was was where I think really my sort of personal passion for the cloud came from was seeing the kind of stuff that you could build with serverless and this is ultimately how I got into the cloud industry and how I've moved about different positions was not necessarily making a leap from one position into another actually taking a job that exposes you a little bit to something else that you're interested in so you're kind of half in one world and half in another and by working these some of these jobs where I basically I was doing software engineering for a bit and also cloud for a bit then allowed me to transition and take bigger steps and bigger steps forward to work more and more with different cloud technology. Okay, so I'll leave it there for today. If there's anything specific that I mentioned that you'd want me to dig into, more than happy to do a subsequent video and, and dive into that. In terms of the sort of take home points, basically what I would do differently if I was to do things again is one is focus very specifically on a, on a certain set of skills. In my case, that was the mean stack for you. That might be serverless, it might be Kubernetes, it might be some other different type of development. It might be AWS specific and things like that. Uh, another thing was build a portfolio, put your stuff online, uh, build sort of a, you know, a personal brand, put a blog up there, share your ideas. Uh, another one is create projects. Create big, meaningful, and meaty projects. Uh, when you think that you've, you know, you've built out a project, something like the Cloud Resume Challenge, and you think you've taken it far enough, take it another step further. Add testing, add alerting, add monitoring. Really take that far, you know, add documentation to it. Treat it like it's a commercial product in a real life scenario. Seek out jobs as well, where you potentially have the option to step into another area. So do that whole monkey bar thing where you're kind of keeping one hand on one place and going into the next as well. And okay, that's it. Really, I hope that was useful to you. Uh, as I say, if there's anything you want me to dig into there more specifically, more than happy to do that and do it in a subsequent video. Just leave me a comment and let me know. But otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.